All right, so we have finally arrived to seven official Transformers live action films. Thanks to Transformers Rise of the Beasts, the latest installment. And ever since it dropped, literally while I was in New York, I was already thinking, what is my list? Where does this rank on like the list of like best to worst? and so on. Obviously for me, when I watch a movie, like, my mind is, like, fixed on all the new events, so I'm, like, super excited, I'm captivated by it, so it feels fresher, it feels better, mainly because it's newer, so I always like to give it some time and wait to see where it stands in the long run after the hype settles and you really just get to like judge it and observe it from a more objective less emotional standpoint that's when i think the more concrete list can be formed and i think i've arrived to that point so without further ado let's get into my ranking of all seven transformers live action films from 2007 to 2023. Alfonso, this is Optimus Prime. Transform and roll out. Full disclosure, major disclaimer, this is my list of my favorite movie from my least favorite to my most favorite. Coming at number seven, I think everybody can probably predict what this is. This is probably almost everyone's number seven. I, I hope. <laughs> that is Transformers The Last Night, released in 2017, directed by Michael Bay. This movie, you know, I most people have like nothing but hate and rage for this film. I, well, I do, I do, I understand that. I, I really just like, I have more like of a disappointment, like a, like more of a letdown because this film had the potential to be so much greater than what the actual final product was. Like, I think that the choices for the final product were just poorly made. I mean, as a kid, when I watched this initially, you know, I enjoyed watching it with, for my first time. Because when I got out of the theater, I initially was just thinking about the action. The action, the explosiveness, you know, all of the, like, fun stuff happening. Different fight scenes is what I was thinking about. It's why I kind of ranked it high. But, you know, the more I gave it time, <laughs> the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, I, I, I understand why this is such a poorly crafted film. I understand why it is receiving the criticism that it is. Cogman was the funniest thing about the movie, but I think it really needed more robot focus and it needed more of a serious tone and it needed more like logical coherence with like the lore of Transformers and it was missing that. So that's why it ranks definitely the lowest on the list. Number six, I'm gonna have to unfortunately give number six the second to lowest in my opinion is Transformers Age of Extinction, released in 2014, directed by Michael Bay. A lot of people actually enjoyed this movie way more than I did. I actually kind of enjoyed the approaching to and the anticipation of the film more than the film itself. I think the final act of the film is what I enjoy the most about it. Now, there's, there's things that I adore about this movie. Please don't get me wrong. I mean, Lockdown's presence, uh, the debut of the Dinobots. I love Drift being introduced. I freaking love his character. Optimus Prime's new, like, knight design is one of my favorite designs for him. I know it doesn't make sense with the Transformer concept, but it just has a great appearance, and it makes him look really nice and tactical. Steve Jablonski's score for this movie was also really well done. It was perfectly done for the extetics of the film, and the final battle was incredible. I mean, the final battle was awesome. But, like, I just feel like the dramatic shift in style of the movie and the dragged out runtime, like, it is way, way longer than I want it to be. And also the transition from Sam with Wiki to Cave Yeager. You know, I'm Team Sam. I really like him in the films, you know, for the Bavers. I didn't really latch on to Cade Yeager as a character too much, along with Tessa. I really don't like the concept of Transformium, how they just break into a million pieces to reassemble back together in their other form. To me, that, like, ruins the excitement of Transforming. Like, I want to see the mechanical parts of the alt mode convert into the robot mode. That's, like, the whole point of why I like to watch the Transformers. And I just feel like the whole concept was just like a lazy dismissal of like the real mechanical transformations. And also, uh, this was the first film where we did not have uh, my two of my really favorite characters in the Bayverse, and that's Ratchet and Ironhide. Ratchet dying in the very beginning, so we didn't get him for the rest of the movie, and Ironhide being completely absent. He's my second favorite character in the Bayverse, and 
just without him being there just didn't feel right and i don't like hound I, I do not like hound at all and those are just a few things but there's a lot about this film that i just can't rank it high because of so number six age of extinction sorry number five on the list goes to bumblebee released in 2018 directed by travis knight i know a lot of you guys have him like number one or number three like really high up there but I think number five is still pretty solid. He's still in my top five favorite, like, Transformers movies altogether. Now, make no mistake, just because he's number five on the list is because of how many movies there are. Not because I don't like the movie. Because I have very little complaints about this film. I think it absolutely nailed the action scenes with hand-to-hand -hand melee combat with just such awesome choreography. While also perfecting the emotional element of Bumblebee separated from his loved ones. I also think that Haley Steinfeld was the perfect casting for this film. She was the perfect casting for the role of Charlie Watson because she was perfect. I think she perfectly delivered what was needed for the emotion, for the human affairs, and also her scenes with Bumblebee. I also have to say that the Cybertronian War opening scene is the best opening scene for a Transformers movie to date in my opinion. And I honestly feel like it's it's like it's really neck and neck up there with Dark of the Moon's opening. It was just such a blast to see everybody in their G1 inspired designs, but in live action format looking so nice and fresh. The Decepticons were ruthless. I really miss Shatter and Dropkick. I really want them to return, but that's not gonna happen. But I still marked this movie beneath all of the other ones that are above it because I just, I, while I adore this film, I just don't think it compares to the scale and the excitement of the films that are above it on this list. And I also feel like it has just a little bit too much emotion for what my expectation and my desire for a Transformers movie to have and present. I prefer more of a serious, more darker, more captivating, more intense uh, storyline for a Transformers film. And I want way more screen time for the robots also. So, and I feel like we didn't get that much because it was more of like a human robot story that they had to do for Bumblebee, which is proper, but for my preference for a Transformers movie, it doesn't rank in that in that range for me. But nevertheless, it's still a phenomenal movie for its kind, and it did such a great job given its budget, and I'm glad that it performed well. And yeah, I, I really it's one of the most rewatchable Transformers films out there. Number four. Y'all are gonna probably ruin me for this, but it's okay. It's all right. This is my list. This is I really I really put some thought into this list. I'm not just like I'm not just this is not a random like this is really my true in-depth like from the heart. This is my list. Number four, I give it to Revenge of the Fallen. Released in 2009, directed by Michael Bay. I see so many people ranking this movie like extremely low, like you know, second to last or last. But I I honestly don't dislike this movie as much as other people do. Now, is it a good movie from like objective standards? No. Does it have the best writing? Absolutely not. Could some unnecessary shenanigans be removed? 1000%. But this film has too much of the things that I love about the Bayverse for me to rank it lower than where it is. Ironhide's presence. I gotta give it to him because second favorite Bayverse Autobot. Megatron's resurrection, I mean, all of Bumblebee's action scenes and his role, he was awesome in this movie. The final battle, I think, was really awesome. I, I had a really good time watching it. And yes, of course, the forest battle being one of the most sickest hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes in the Bayverse to date. It is one of the best. I wish it would have been much longer, and I wish they would have kept those deleted scenes in there, because it really is awesome. It's not the best Transformers movie. I understand the criticism because of the writing, because of the characters, the fallen being pointless, and just a lot of the stuff that didn't need to be in this movie, especially like Skids and Mudflap and all of their little jokes and innuendos. I understand the hatred for it, but for me, I mean, it's not the worst movie, but it's also not the best. I think this one is just for entertainment value only, and being that it's part of the original trilogy, it just has a special place in my heart still. Number three on the list. So now we are at the top three Transformers films in a live-action franchise. And I have to give this one to Transformers, released in 2007, directed by Michael Bay. This movie is incredible. Like, it is just so 
awesome and have to go in my top three favorite Transformers films. It's one of the most groundbreaking projects like in the Transformers franchise and it's easily one of my favorite Transformers movies ever. The arrival to Earth for the Autobots, one of the most iconic scenes in the live action franchise and it remains that way. You know, the rise of Megatron, his awakening in the uh, Hoover Dam, the All Sparks discovery and its role and contribution. It was so cool that opening scene with Prime narrating and the 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 debut of Steve Jablonski's score there. I think Steve Jablonski's presence in general in this movie, his his talent was on full display and it really created a monster of a movie. Like it has the same effect today than it did before and I think that's a true testament to how great of a movie it was for me. And also being that this was my interest into the franchise, the base films was what introduced me to Transformers. It has a very, very special place in my heart. The first Transformers movie is just hands down, just a freaking monster and I love it. All right, here we go. This is the, this was the ultimate challenge for me. You guys know the two that are remaining. Well, that's what I have been battling with. After watching Transformers Rise of the Beasts be like, man, this movie is great. But also remember, what the other Transformers movie that I haven't mentioned yet, Dark of the Moon, remembering what that brought to the world, what that brought to me as an individual and to the community and the franchise. It is so difficult. I was battling with this for the longest and I wanted to wait for the recency and the excitement of the current release to like die down and for me to really think about it. So my second favorite Transformers film, goes to Transformers Rise of the Beasts, released in 2023, directed by Stephen Capel Jr. While I adore this film, and I genuinely believe that this is one of the best Transformers movies we've ever gotten, I have to mark it at number two. Still a phenomenal movie though. From action to the robot screen time to the well-depicted emotion of the characters to the humor involved, I have to say they crafted this movie with a lot of care and it really shows. It's not a perfect movie by any means necessary. It does have its flaws like every Transformers movie does. Even though it has the flaws that it has, I still think it ranks high on the list. And the reason why is because I think this movie does the best job at representing the entirety of what Transformers is known for. It has a really good solid balance. It tries to give you that spectacle and that action kind of like what michael bay did while also giving you the heart and the emotion the connection to the characters which fans adore while also giving you accurate g1 lore integration with the debut of planet unicron with the mention of primus and what that could mean in the future the presence of dark energy which we know is inner john prime's character arc being accurately depicted there's so much that they did in this film. The Beast Wars characters, the Beast Wars universe in general, finally getting some attention, getting recognized. And on top of all of that, you know, the Brooklyn style, the hip hop style, I actually really appreciate because it's a change of pace. It's unique, it stands out. It's not following the same framework and same uh, style as like the rock and roll, the Linkin Park. I mean, Transformers and rock and roll has been like synced up since the 80s. But this was a bold like, you know what? Let's give another culture some attention. Let's show some like a different culture for once. And I think that was cool because there are Transformers fans that align more with that kind of style, with that kind of culture than the others. This film, I truly believe, is the start of something amazing. And I'm really hopeful for the future because this is a strong foundation that they're building on and the characters and the, the storyline that they can bring in. And it looks like they're paying attention to G1 lore can really also help with G1 fans, not <laughs> complaining about Transformers movies so much. And lastly, finally, ultimately, there is only one movie left. So you know what I'm gonna say. The number one movie out of the list, still for me, is Transformers Dark of the Moon, released in 2011, directed by Michael Bay. There, there's just no comparison, guys, like when it comes to this movie. Like I, I, I had Rise of the Beasts in this position for a while until I revisited Dark of the Moon. And I just cannot conclude that this movie is not the best. For me, like, I just can't do it. I don't know, there's just something very special about it that connects to me on a deep level. Like, 
it inspired me to even like start making videos. Like it's truly that special. It crushes on every scale, on every measure. The designs of the characters, the scoring, the action, even the scale of the movie and the production itself, the anticipation journey, the figures, the humor in the movie, the robot cast and how awesome they were, Optimus Prime's presence in this film, the plot twist of Sentinel Prime's betrayal, the explosive final battle, the chill of the Decepticon invasion, the heroism of the surprise Autobots return, Samwood Wiki's final contribution, everything, everything. <laughs> from sacrifice to victory, from sorrow to triumph, this was the, the, the ultimate climax pretty much of the Bayverse trilogy. It was just, it was, it was designed almost to be the final installment for Bayverse. You can tell by the way that it concluded. It doesn't level up with like the robot emotion like Rise of the Beast does. And I think that's important, you know, because it helps you connect to the robots more than just the humans. I think the human emotion was more felt in Dark of the Moon than in Rise of the Beast. You know, it was more of the robot emotion. So that's why it's kind of neck and neck, because when you can connect to the Transformers, that's a huge deal because that's it's a Transformers movie. So that's why it's like objectively, I'm like, uh. But for my favorite, I gotta give it to Dark of the Moon. This, in my opinion, is Michael Bay's most crowned Transformers project. I don't like Ironhide's death. There's, that's one of my, that's my least favorite thing about the movie, honestly. Ironhide passing away, because, like I said, second favorite Babers Autobot, I want him to be around. And he deserved to be around, at least for the final battle. You could have killed him off at the end or something. So yes, Dark of the Moon wins the day for me, and I will cherish this movie forever. I think I'm really comfortable with this list of my favorites. I think this is a good depiction a good representation of like where everything stands as a matter of fact i love something in every transformers movie even the last night there's something i love in every movie that's that's my list guys hope you guys understand relax i know i put revenge of the fallen up there <laughs> above bumblebee but the scale of that movie was just it's just larger and it's just it's more fun it's the original trilogy i had to put it up there let me know what you guys think about this list in the comment section below and also let me know what your list is what is your ranking for the seven live action transformers films on this scale from least to most favorite and also tell me why do you think that number one is the best in your opinion that's the list thanks for tuning in if you enjoyed this video drop a like on it if you're new subscribe follow me on ig twitter and tiktok at alfonso nation for all and yeah let's freaking go rise of the beast it's still peak and dark of the moon i, I just I, that's that's my movie <laughs> thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next one home team